Hi everyone. I hope you enjoyed this year's Julia conference so far. I'm Ali from Datashift. Datashift is a small data consultancy company based in Netherlands and also an AWS partner in big data and machine learning. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Julia on AWS SageMaker. So we will have Julia's power and AWS scalability together. We will start with a quick introduction to AWS SageMaker. After that, we'll go through each step needed to install Julia in this service. And finally, we will automate the whole process using AWS CloudFormation. So uh, what is AWS SageMaker? SageMaker is the Amazon's machine learning platform that makes life easy for data scientists as they don't need to worry about uh, configuration or limitation in memory and CPU, and they can focus on creating value instead. Uh, SageMaker covers all aspects uh, the stage of uh, a machine learning project from preparing and pre-processing data to build, train, and tune their model, and finally deploy them. When it comes to computation choice in SageMaker, you have multiple options. Uh, first of all, it's standard instances that used for uh, general purposes. Uh, the compute optimized uh, in which the balance between CPU and memory is bent towards CPU. And finally, as a related computing, uh, that is technically instances with, with GPU and can be used for parallel computation. Uh, if you are using Python or R, you don't need to go through additional steps, but uh, as unfortunately there is no uh, support by default for Julia in SageMaker, we need to go some additional space to install it. So how we can add Julia to SageMaker? First of all, we need to install Julia and put it in a right place so we won't lose it each time we restart our notebook. After that, we need to install some basic libraries. And finally, we can activate Julia and add it as a kernel to our notebook. But each time we restart our notebook, we need to restart the last step. This whole process can be exhausting, especially if you are using SageMaker every day. So we automate the whole process using AWS CloudFormation. AWS CloudFormation will take care of all this step instead of us. Uh, and so let's see it in action. Uh, to do this, first we go to our blog post in uh, i.datashift.co slash Julia. Here we describe the, whole, uh, the process in detail, uh, but for now I'm just going to the automation with cloud formation part and click on this link. And before that, make sure that you are successfully logged into your AWS management console. It will go by default to Ireland, but you can change it to other region, for example, Ohio. Uh, here we need to uh, enter some parameter, like a stack name. Uh, the instance type, uh, notebook name. And the volume size, it is technically the storage available for our notebook. Uh, if you are using AWS for free trial, just keep the default value. Otherwise, you uh, have uh, other options. Uh, I strongly suggest you to take a look at look at, take a look at the SageMaker pricing page for more information. And now we can create a REST stack. So, what exactly CloudFormation do here? Uh, it makes some resources for us, uh, for example, the execution rule uh, it, it, that gives us the needed permission, and also a notebook instance along with a lifecycle configuration. This lifecycle configuration uh, installed Julia in the first time we create our notebook, and each time we restart our notebook, uh, this lifecycle configuration reactivates Julia, so uh, we don't need to do anything. Uh, this process can uh, take a few minutes, so I'll be back when it's finished. So as you can see, the creation is uh, completed. And now we can see our notebook in the Amazon SageMaker page in the notebook part. And now we can create uh, notebooks with Julia 1.6. For example, here I 
uh, run a simulation to visualize the famous Lorentz attractor. And as you can see, it's worked well. So that's it. Uh, here in DataChef, we help our customers through uh, their projects uh, and show them how to use uh, AWS services in the most efficient way. We are also hiring data engineers. So if you're interested, uh, contact us. Goodbye and have a good day.